Joining me now is Simon Whitelock. He's the president of ITC Michigan. It's good to see you, Simon. Good to see you. And Representative State Rep Joe Bellino. He's also the chair of the State House Energy Committee. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. You know, as we wrap up this um, this week, it's always really neat to hear what people are, are talking about most of all. So, Simon, I'm going to ask you first when people are approaching you and talking, what are the biggest topics that people are talking about? For me, it's infrastructure, 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 you know, whether it's roads, water, schools, education, electricity, uh, those are the topics that, that kind of get me excited. And I heard a lot about those topics this week. So mm -hmm. it's good to hear positive conversation. I think we're making progress. Hopefully we can make some progress on the roads. Uh, that's an issue that's near and dear to everybody's heart. So. Yeah, and it's, I was just going to say, and we're so glad that we have Joe sitting right here, because when you talk about infrastructure, it always pivots to, so how are we going to pay for all of that? <laughs> and, and, and really the planning on that. And so I'm sure that's what everyone, the legislature has been talking about up yes. here. After we get done celebrating car insurance, we've right. got two more days to celebrate that. That's mm -hmm. right. Are we, is, is that the, yeah. end of the expiration we, on that? <laughs> then we hit the ground and uh, start getting our elbows wet and work on infrastructure. You know, I think we can back up, though, and take a moment and celebrate the no-fault bill. Um, but really, I think what everyone is talking about up here is what it signifies in terms of saying there can be a compromise. Mm -hmm. And that compromise doesn't have to be a dirty word. And both sides can give a little bit, especially with these first few months in office for everyone, when, with a lot of turnover in the legislature. It was excellent. And I, the bill wasn't what I wanted, but I saw some light in the tunnel. It was going to be good for a lot of people, everybody in my district. Let's go for it. So. Okay. And so then it feels like, all right, so now we have several things on the table. When we do talk about infrastructure, and the governor talked about roads yesterday in her presentation, most of all, in looking at that 45 cent gas tax, um, we've heard from a lot of leadership that 45 cents is, is, is a non-starter at this point. What are some of the conversations or some of the things that you can share with us, Joe, about what, what that number may end up being or if it's a different funding source altogether? Well, my speaker, Lee Chatfield, always talked about all the money that we're taxing for road, for on gas should go to the roads, all the money. So that means we have to backfill somehow, find money somewhere to make up for that about $800 million right now, our sales tax on gas. We're one of the few states that use a sales tax on gas and don't use it. We're the only one that doesn't use it for the roads then. We use it for the general fund. Right. So we need to do that first and then figure out where we're going to get the money. Okay, so when we talk about infrastructure, do people automatically think of energy in those conversations? Or are we, are we just thinking about roads and we're just thinking about bridges and to a certain extent water yeah I, I think energy is one of those things that we just sort of flip the light switch on and expect it to be there and and that we're fine with that as, as a company that we understand that's our job and we take it seriously to make sure that the lights come on when when we flip the switch and i i think from my perspective we're at a very exciting point in in history in terms of energy 10 15 years from now the world of energy is going to be vastly different than it is today. And even over the last 10 years, we've seen a, a significant transformation. But I think the transformation is happening. And I think it will become more uh, of, a, of a conversation for the general public over time. But today, we're more focused on roads and schools. And, you know, and, and that, that's great. But I, I'm very encouraged by the, the uh, cooperation that went into the no-fault bill. Mm -hmm. And I think that sort of spirit will help solve a lot of other problems around other forms of infrastructure and 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 for us another one that's important is is education and i think um we're seeing some some movement there too so i think i'm very encouraged by this conference and with leadership um with by folks like uh um, Joe, I think I think we're in a, a great place in this state. You know, you said something as funny as that we all just think of flipping on the light switch and we are automatically assume that it's there. Talk to me a little bit, Simon, about what ITC is working on to make sure that the grid is flexible, to make sure that the reliable source of energy is there and when we need it. Yeah, we're, we're doing a lot. Um, one of the things that we're doing right now is trying to look ahead to the future. Where, where are we heading? And because it takes such a long time for us to, to build a new transmission line from planning to, to permitting to mm -hmm. siting, there's such a long lead time. We have to start working today on projects that are a decade away. So for us, we're looking down the road. We're seeing what this changing generation mix is. We're seeing what the impact of electric vehicles is going to be of batteries, new technologies, and trying to plan for a system that will provide flexibility and resiliency and redundancy, stand up to weather, stand up to man-made threats, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's physical or cyber. And so that's, that's really what we're doing. We're sort of planning, planning for the future, trying to make uh, investments today that will be beneficial, not just today, but also 
for the long term. You know, and when he's when he's talking, when Simon's talking about planning for the future and, and seeing how that will all work, obviously the policy and the regulation, you've got to be doing that same kind of planning process at the state level. Same thing. We After what happened at the Ray pumping station, we've got right. to make sure we have import-export capability in case there's a problem. Uh, I believe that the UP needs to pay less for energy. You know, they pay a lot more than we do in the Lower Peninsula. So I think we should, be, we should have a, a, a system where we can shoot energy to the UP or they can shoot energy to us. You know, we're a peninsula. Not like, like most of the states, we can't get energy from the east and west. It's got to come from Ohio, Indiana, or from up here. Mm-hmm. So uh, in working with, with our policy, we've got to make sure we have the future planning in, in, in stake so that we can get that done. And is it hard to, to you know, you're looking at that on the one side, but when it feels like when we're talking about infrastructure, we're just making sure it, feel, it feels like we're, we're still working in the present um, and to mm-hmm. m- making sure that we actually have physical roads, physical bridges, physical mm-hmm. pipelines. Um, it, do you find that it's a, a tough track to be say, or we're working here, but we still have to devote a lot of time to looking to the future? Sure, you just have to have plans. Uh, the Energy Committee last term, we did a few ses- few days on uh, EV charging. What's our future? What's it gonna be like? Where are they gonna be? We have very little in Michigan now. Mm-hmm. Well now, with a rate case come down from DTE and consumers, we're gonna get 23 million put into charging stations all over the state, and that's just a start. That's just a speck of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I imagine in the next five years, we'll spend 100 million on EV charging because it's happening. Uh, Simon, talk to me a little bit about renewable energy when people are looking at, at maybe greener sources of energy. Um, how do you keep up with that that demand? And what are some of the projects in, in the future that we can look forward to and, and the way we're getting our energy and how that's changing? Yes, renewables are, right now, they are basically the entire queue that's lined up to interconnect to the grid is renewables. And 10 years ago, that wasn't the case. So we've seen a huge increase in wind generation in the state. And now we're seeing a lot more solar energy that's uh, lining up to, to uh, come online. So I think it's, it's shifting from wind to solar a little bit. And you don't think of solar so much when you think of Michigan, but it's actually now very economical and that the economics are driving the shift to replace the existing uh, coal plants that are old and you know environmentally not as friendly with, with these renewables. But with the renewables comes a challenge of intermittency. They don't, you know, the sun shines when it wants right. to and the wind blows on and off. So we have to be able to make sure that we have the flexibility to, to move power across the state or, or even across state lines as needed to, to deal with that intermittent nature of the renewables. But the renewables are coming and it's not just um, you know, policy, it's, it's economics, it's uh, the customer is demanding it, and I think that change is here, and we see it across the country. It's nothing unique to Michigan. This is, this is a nationwide, you know, it's a, it's a global uh, trend, and we just see that continuing more and more into the future. And then how does that change what you consider, Joe? Well, we've got to make sure we have policies in place where they can invest hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, like the thumb. We have all the windmills in the thumb. Yes. They had to invest hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to get transmission, get that power down to Detroit area and down to other parts of the, of the state. So we've got to make sure we have policies in place to make it economical to do that because we're going to have solar fields all over the state. And unlike having seven power plants, we're going to have 25, 30 solar fields. We've got to get that power to people. So transmission is key. Do you think, and I'm going to kind of wrap up as, we, as we're running a little bit out of time here, but do you think that we have our priorities straight in the state of Michigan right now? I mean, as we're looking forward to, are we concentrating on the issues, the important issues now that you think that we need to? And I'm going to start with you, Joe. Yes, I think we are. I think we have to look at this with common sense, with engineering in stake. Um, we can't be all solar, all wind tomorrow. There's no way it can happen. We don't have right. battery storage. There's so many things that will happen. Like Simon said, next 15, 20 years, It'll make energy turn on its head, but we'll still have energy because all we think as consumers is that we flip the switch and it comes on. Except for that little incident 16 years ago, we all have power when we flip the switch on unless there's a storm. So we've got to keep that trend going. Simon, the last word on this? Yeah, I'm I'm excited. It's an exciting time. I think we are focused on the right things, and uh, I'm I'm hopefully uh, optimistic uh, for the future. So. All right, Simon Whitelock and State Rep Joe Bellino. It's good to have you both here and enjoy your, your, enjoy your ride home from Mackinac. Thank we'll see you. you soon. We'll be right back. Stay with us.